time goes really fast, right? And now we are in the last month of 2023. Are you ready for 2024? Yes. Already? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. So today's, you know, the Bible verse, the first part was from Psalm, right? Which book of the Bible has the largest number of chapters? Psalm. Young one. Psalm. Psalm. Yes, wow. you already know. And how many chapters does it have then? Young one. 150. Yes, Young one knows everything, right? <laughs> 150 and 150 songs in Psalm. Okay. And here comes another question. Let me see. Okay, Young one, you answer. Okay. Which one is all this chapter? Remember? Yes! 90! Yes! <laughs> this is the chapter we just read, right? Today's uh, chapter 90 was written by whom? Moses. 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 Yeah, in the, in the first verse, it, it, it stated that Moses wrote it. And this is the oldest chapter of the Psalm, and Psalm is mostly written by whom? King David. King David. But chapter 90 was written by Moses almost like 500 years before David, okay? Before presence of David. By the way, who was Moses? I assume that you have some knowledge about Moses, but please allow me to introduce you to Moses again, okay? Bible says like this, click, please. In Deut Deuteronomy 34, uh, you know, verse 10, since then, no prophet has risen is in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. Okay. Moses knew God face to face. So Bible says Moses has the greatest prophet and he knew God the most. Okay? So as as we all know, God is a maker of heavens and the earth, right? And including us, including man, human beings. And who knows the most about us? Okay? God. Why is it? Because God made us. Okay? So, in terms, you know, Moses knew the God very well, the most, that means Moses knew human beings. He knows us, okay? So if you know, if you want to know who we are the most, okay, then please study God and you will get to know us very well, like Moses, okay? If you are studying, you know, if, you are, if you are a doctor or psychologist, okay, if you wanna know who we are, you should know God. Then God will give you the wisdom who we are. Amen? Amen. So let me briefly tell you about Moses' life. He was the greatest leader of Israel, right? You know that. He led Israelites 40 years in the wilderness and he also died there. He didn't make it to the camp, right? Anyway, he was a writer of what? Pentateuch, right? The first five books of Bible, he wrote, you know, these important books. And he had a life of prince of Egypt, right? At the top. Think about the Egypt. The Egypt was the you know strongest country at the time, and he was prince. Of Egypt and about 40 years he spent you know luxurious life and got the education as a prince of Egypt and he became a what a chaste slave he was a murderer right and he spent another 40 years in the wilderness and Moses had highest level of life and he also had a lowest bottom of the life 
So we can imagine how much inner conflict he had, right, uh, out of his life. Now, at the end of his life, Moses is telling us, and including, actually, Moses is telling to, to the Israelites before his death, which is Psalm 90. Okay, we, we just read it. Okay, so we need to focus on his lifetime lessons. Who knew God the most? At the same time, who knew who we are, right? So now you are very interested in right what what he he taught us right in Psalm 90. So here are Moses's you know last testaments to the Israelites. There are you know three categories. One is what is life, okay? What is life? And another one is things that we need to pray to God. Moses suggested to Israelites, these are the things that you need to pray to God. The third thing is use how do we use our time wisely? Okay? So what are the categories? First one is what is life and the things that we need to pray to God and what is time? How do we use the time wisely? So I'm gonna you know briefly introduce you the first two topics. Okay. Okay. Um, first one is what is what is life? Moses said that God is our dwelling place. Okay, that's the first thing that he said. Which means God is our master, not us. Okay? And our lives belong to God, not us. That's the point, the first point. And, and another thing is, and then Moses, Moses said God is everlasting God. God is everlasting. We know only our lives from our birth to death. Or somebody else's you know, birth to death. That's, you know, we, we, we went to history classes and then we learned, you know, some famous people's birth to death, right? So, in our mind, we only have a, you know, set of feeling of time. But God is everlasting. So, eternity belongs to God, okay? And or we, we may understand, you know, eternity, maybe we understand when we faith, face our end of life. Maybe, okay? But not now. But Moses said, God is everlasting and eternity belongs to God. And third topic is, people die. Not only seniors, but also teenagers or people in their 20s, they can also die, you know? And God said in verse two, Return to dust, okay? The sons of men, you will return to dust, okay? That's, that's the number three about what is life. And Moses also continued that our life is meaningless, okay? Uh, like, you know, Solomon in Ecclesiastes, you know, want to, meaningless, meaningless, says the you know, teacher, and utterly meaningless, everything is meaningless, mm -hmm. you know, everything is meaningless, okay? <laughs> and Moses also said that our life, you know, life is meaningless, like a watch in the night, or dry or withered grass, okay? Grass in the morning, they shoot up, you know, pretty, uh, pretty fast, but in the evening, when you cut it out, dries away. Something like that. So lastly, Moses said that life causes anger and wrath of God. Okay? In verse 11 says, Who knows the power of your anger? God's anger. For as the fear of you, so is your wrath. You know, we will live a life in, you know, we, think about your life. You know, we live and make sins against God in our daily lives. But 
these are all our problems, you know, and it causes our troubles, you know, too. So, our life causes anger and wrath of God. That's the nature of life. So, what are the five things? One is, what was that? God is our dwelling place. Another one is, God is everlasting. And we return to dust. And life is meaningless, and life is, life causes wrath of God. Okay, that, that is five characteristics of our life. Okay, what are the, you know, uh, we already did it, and in this situation, what do we need to do then, you know? We, we think, you know, our, our life is meaningless, but Moses is suggesting us to pray to God. We need help from God. There are things that we cannot do in our lives, right? That's why we pray to God. So Moses said that we, we need, first thing is, we need confession of God. In verse 14 it says, Return, O Lord, how long, and have compassion on your servants. Okay? Second, you know, prayer concern that Moses recommended is that help to rejoice and be glad all our days. First one was compassion. Another one is make us happy, God. God, we need happiness, okay? In verse 14, without God, life is empty. And without God, life is no satisfaction at all. Okay? So only God can make us happy and make us, you know, fulfilled. You know, the, the feeling of, you know, um, I, mean the, I mean the satisfaction, right? And third prayer Moses recommended us to do was make us glad as, as return of God's punishment. Okay? God punished you. Because of your sins or your, you know, your parents' sins and original sins, and God, please make me happy as you punished us. Okay, does it make sense to you? Mm -hmm. And how you know, God allowed hard times in our life because of our sins, and now we need to pray to God for our happiness as a return of God's punishment. And why is it? Why is it? Because Moses knew God. God can make us happy in, in, that, in, in that as a return of his punishment. Right? So if you think you, you had too much of trouble in your lifetime and you need to pray to God. God, please make me happy because Moses recommended us to pray like this, okay? God, please make me happy, okay? Why is it? In our situation, we have Jesus Christ, Amen. right? Jesus in our mind and we are not sinners anymore. Is God going to listen to a prayer like this? Yes, of course. That's why Moses is recommend us to do, right? So, the fourth prayer is that we need God's presence for us and for our children. Okay? In verse 16, Moses said, let's read it. Let, Let your, your word appear, appear, appear to your servants and, and your, your glory to your, your children. children. And which is, you know, this verse is also connected to the the next one, you know, fifth prayer. To establish the work of our hands. Moses said that in verse 17, and let the beauty of the Lord, beauty of the Lord our God be upon us. He's asking the presence of God right here. And then establish the work of our hands for us. Establish work, the work of our hands. He repeated you know, twice the same, you know, sentence, right? Establish our, the, the works of our hands for us. Why is it? Without God's presence, 
what we are doing is nothing. It doesn't stand up, right? That's why Moses, you know, recommended us to ask God. God, we need your presence. Please establish the works of our hands. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, what are the five things that Moses suggests us to pray? First one is compassion. Second, Rejoice and be glad for our, our days. Third, make us glad as a return of God's punishment. Number four, we need God's presence for us and for our children. And lastly, establish the works of our hands. Amen. We talked about what is life and we talked about the things that we need to pray. through Moses, right? The, there are very specific things in Psalm 90 that Moses talked about the meaning of time. Okay, now we are going into the topic, meaning of time. Okay, so God created time, right? You, you remember? When, in, when was it? It was written in the first verse of the Bible. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, right? Where did, where did he create the time there? The beginning. In the beginning, yes. You guys are so smart that you catch it, right? Yeah. When God said, you know, in the beginning, in the beginning, right? Bible says in the beginning. That means God created time at that, you know, at that moment. There is the creation of the time there, right? And by the way, why did God create, the, create time? Why did He? Because God wants us to be here in this world. God created the world and time, right? Together. So, we did not exist But God made us from the dust of the ground. And for example, you have pet and livestock and animals around, uh, around us. And there are plants and trees and beautiful flowers outside. They were on the earth. But as time goes by, 100 years later, you know, nobody knew the presence of them at all. You know, you, you, you won't remember because you... You all died at the time. <laughs> anyway, do you know the name of the cow that you ate yesterday as a beef steak? <laughs> no. But the name could be, you know, some weird name, right? But when these animals and, and all, all kinds of, you know, creatures like plants around us, they will vanish and they will disappear eventually, right? But... When it comes to human beings, us, God created time for us, okay, listen carefully, to be an existing being, okay, out of, out of the many disappearing beings. Can you understand this? <laughs> God wants us to be an existing being out of Disappearing beings. Okay? Okay, this is the most important statement of uh, today's sermon. And why did God create time to make existing beings out of disappearing things, beings? Okay? During the course of our lifetime, we need to be existing beings. Okay? Amen? Amen. 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 So you should know the right relation be relationship between time and your being, okay? And, and then, you know, we can use our time wisely, okay? So let me, you know, explain about how can you be an existing being, okay? Before that, let's greet to each other. Be a being. Be a being. <laughs> be a being. <laughs> okay. Be a being. Does it make sense? Does it make sense? Okay. Maybe, like, it does not make sense, you know, in psychology class, but, you know. Be a being, you know. Okay. 
So, but there is one point of time when we get to know the importance of time. Uh, when would it be? You know? When there is no time. Okay? People get to know the importance of time or, or their life, but it would be too late by that time. You know, when would this be? When they face their death. Immediately coming death, you know. When, 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 when somebody, you know, somebody sentenced to death by a doctor, you have a cancer or something, you know. <laughs> then this is the, you know, best time that you get to know the importance of time, but it could be too late, okay? So, the, so today's main point is here. I will teach you the importance of time, precious your time before you get to know there's no time, okay? So that's the point here. That you can use your time wisely. Amen? Amen. So most people outside, they try their best to extend their lives or not to die, okay? They try their best not to die because they do not know what will happen after that. That's the problem. Look at these two guys. <laughs> do you know? Do you know these two guys? Who they are? Yeah. You don't know. Uh, do you know? Yun Ji San Seng Yim. Uh, she, she already saw this in newspaper or something, right? <laughs> they are father and son. The, the front guy is father. Back guy is son. Name of the father is Brian Jones, who is in his 40s, okay? He seems to be a little bit, you know, young, right? 40s. And he received blood of his son behind him, okay? And to revive his body age, you know, to reduce the body age. And he's a millionaire IT, in IT business. and. He spent two million dollars to get some blood right away. You know, uh, you know, the, the bad to bad. They were, you know, lying together. The doctor, you know, they took the blood of essence of blood of his son, and you know, the doctor injected right away to this guy, you know, Brian Jones, and and the. Project name is Project Blueprint. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, his body is now he, uh, is uh, 18 years old. That's the goal, but you know who knows. Okay. One of you should tell him to join by <laughs> Zion Church and be ready for the life after death. Okay. Okay. So it seems to be stupid. You know, let's let's go back. You know, the, the next slide, okay? Let's go, next slide. Let's go. But why people, they care about, they do not care about the life after death? Why don't they care? Because time belongs to Satan. Satan. Okay? So for the people of Zion, let us realize the true meaning of time and the importance of time as today through Moses' last testament before it's too late, okay? Let's realize it. And that's why Paul said that 16, you know, making the, uh, Paul said that in, in, in our, you know, word of God, in verse 16, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. In verse Ephesians 5, 16, making the most of the opportunity because the days are evil. That's NIV translation, okay? In NASB, very similar, making the most of your time because the days are evil. But in New King James Version, says, redeem the time because the days are evil. So, they are slightly different, you know, translations. Why is it that? Why is it like that? They translated Old Greek to in our translation. 
So that's what. Redeem. The, I think I like the last one, New King James Version. Redeem the time because days are evil. And in, in this you know, verse, redeem means exagorazo in Hebrew, I, I not Greek. Uh, that has got two, two meanings, redeem or make a good use of it, or to save something. Or the days are evil. Evil means poneros. This is uh, it requires. It, it means full of. It requires full of labor or bad hardships. Evil. So, in let's you know in our Zion translation, I wrote that down. Save your time because time belongs to Satan. Okay. Does it make sense? This is, you know, our our translation. Let's read it all together. Save your time because time belongs to Satan. Okay? Because there are many translations we can translate in our way too, right? So there's no problem. Okay? Let's go back Moses' Moses' last words. He said, you know, in verse 12, teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Right? He said that. Let me tell you that there are you know, special ways that God counts our days. You know, Moses knew it. And this means that God does not count the days that we lived by our own ways and desires, regardless of God's will or God's, what God wants us to do. Okay? If you do your things, regardless of God's will, God does not count those times. Okay? So, how do we know? And you may ask me, how do you know, you know God doesn't count? And when you read the Bible carefully, there are some you know, pieces of evidence for that. Just you know, before escaping Egypt, God instructed Moses and Aaron like this, in Exodus chapter 12 too, saying, this month is to be for you the first month, the first month of your year. And God continued how, you know, God continued, continued how to prepare a lamb of, lamb of God and for each family when they escaped the Egypt, right? They prepared lamb, right? And got the blood and they put, you know, blood door frames right so at that time God proclaimed that this is the new month new month of the year okay God starts counting our lives when we escape Egypt Egypt means the word that in, in other ones in, in, in other words when you first accept Jesus God counts your time Okay? okay, and this also means that our spiritual age starts when we accept Jesus Christ as our, our Lord and Savior. For me, it has been 23 years by now since I first accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. But still, I feel like I'm a, I'm a low teenager, okay, <laughs> by myself. And my spiritual age, but how about your spiritual age? What do you think about your spiritual age? If you accept Jesus five, year, five years ago, then is your spiritual age five years old now? No. No, there's no guarantee. It could be 10 years no. if you spend, you know, God daily. I mean, the, double the, you know, what God wants you to do. Then it could be 10 years. You could be, you know, this person could be one year or one month. Nobody knows. Only God knows, right? So, spiritual age is, you know, is not according to the physical age. Spiritual age is, is based on how old is your inner being, right? So, it could be 10 years old or it could be one month old baby, right? So, it totally depends on the age of our inner being. Amen? Amen. So, 
Another example uh, is written in uh, 1 Kings 6, 1. Uh, I didn't you know, make a slide for this, but listen carefully. Bible says it took 400, 180 years when Solomon started building the temple of God. 480 years, but it contradicts Paul's statements in Acts 13, 18, verse 18 through 22. Paul said it took about 573 years as a total when they first built the, you know, the temple of God. So 480 years versus 573 years in uh, with the Paul's, you know, statement. And when we count, you know, 40 years in the wilderness, according to, to Paul, he counted 40 years in the wilderness, 400 years, uh, years to take off, take take over Canaan, and period of, period of judges, and period of the Saul king, and the period of King David, and when we think about you know 480 years and 573 years, there are 93 years of differences in these numbers. Then you know, biblical you know scholars they 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 just you know stu studied it and why there are differences and they found that it's not wrong you know having two different numbers because. During the you know judges period of judges, Israelites became slave for eight years under Kusan Risadaim, the king of Aram in Judges three, and eighteen years under Eglon, king king of Moab in Judges three, twenty years under Zavin, king of Canaan, and seven years under you know, Midianites, and finally forty years under. Philistines in, in you know chapter 13 of Judges, the total numbers of the slavery be, it becomes 93 years. Okay? So God does not count these years in Israelites' history. Okay? So the same to your life too. The same to our life, lives too. It also applies. If you live your life according to your will and your desire, it does not count by God at all. Amen? Amen. If you live your life um, regardless of God's will, it becomes waste of your time in God's eyes. Okay? Okay? Next slide. Let's read it all together. Clear. If you live your life regardless of God's will, you are wasting your time. Clip once more. Save your time or life. Okay? So, next slide. Click once again. Let's read it. Redeem your time because days are evil. Wait a second. In our giant translation, Save your time because time belongs to Satan. Okay, let's keep going. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord. Okay, how do we know the will of the Lord? How? You need to know God's will in your life. Okay, how do we know? You have to grow your inner being. That's the God's purpose. Okay? So when, whenever you have chances, you join worship services. Amen. You have to have you know, successful worship services you know, in your life. Amen? Amen. And how do, we, how do we know God's will? Join Bible studies. You know, when you hear or study words of God, you will get to know. There's going to be some time click your thoughts and brain, you know. God clicks you. And this is, you know, what I want you to do while you are studying Bible studies. 
God does not work when you are watching TV or YouTube or playing games. God cannot click you at the time, okay? So when, when does He click you? When you join the worship services, when you try to communicate to God, God will talk to you and touch you, okay? So are you in trouble right now? How's your life? Are you having difficulties in your life? The important thing is that find out God's will is how you respond to your hardships in your lives. Mm -hmm. Your hardships and disasters can be blessings and opportuni opportunities to you. Okay? And find out you know, God's will and God's why God is giving you a hard time, okay? And remember that Moses like Moses said that God will repay you as he punished you. Cuz God maybe God have to punish us because of our sins. If we have sins in us, right? That's why we may have troubles in our lives. Okay? So, if you have trouble in your life, if you have hardships in your life, let's make it as an opportunity for blessings in our lives. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, what kinds of important things are you doing in your daily lives? Think about your daily lives. Review what you are doing whole week or daily lives. Are they going to be really important to your life after death or in your eternal life? Okay? Think about what you are doing. Let me tell you, know, let me tell you the most important thing in your life. You need to grow your inner being and you need to have the image of Jesus in you. Amen? Yeah. Amen. So, for that, you should be successful in your worship services and Bible studies and church life, okay? Especially, join church and have your cross and follow Jesus, okay? That's the, the right course and right way. I pray in the name of, you know, Lord, that you will worship well, and participate the Bible studies and receive the heart of the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Next slide. Okay. You will love it. Summary. How to use the time wisely? How do we use the time wisely? Okay. You have to know God created time in the beginning. Okay. For what? To make as a existing being out of disappearing beings, okay? And second, you need to save your time since time belongs to Satan. Satan is, you know, deceiving you. You spend this time for your fun and, you know, do whatever you want, but don't go to worship services, Bible studies, things like that, okay? <laughs> Satan deceives you to make you waste your, of your time. You need to save your time. Amen? And without Holy Spirit, you cannot save your time. So, or you do not realize the importance of your time. So Holy Spirit has to click us that we can realize the importance of life. And God does not count the days that you live by your own desire or will. Okay? And know the purpose of your life. What is the purpose of your life? God wants you to grow with your inner being. Inner being. So how do we grow our inner being to be brides of Christ? You join worship services, Bible studies. You take every chances that you can get to know God. Amen? Amen. This is the word of God.